Welcome to our first video on logistic regression. In this video, we will introduce the regression model as well as discuss how can we deal with binary outcomes when they are dependent variables. Let's start by recapping continuous and categorical variables in the context of a general linear regression model as the one shown. Think of what could drive customers' preferences to buy a certain product. Amongst the independent variables we could find, we could have continuous ones such as age or the person's income or a person's height, which is important for clothing. All these have numerical values. We could also have categorical variables that determine a customer's product preference, for instance, gender, city, or ethnicity. And we had learned that we could use dummy variables to represent these. On the other hand, we could also have various forms of dependent variables. For example, we could quantify with numbers how much does a customer spend or how much time does a customer spend at a store. However, a more simpler question could be if a customer buys a product or not, which is a categorical variable with two potential outcomes. For these kind of variables, we will be using dummies. Let's look at some examples of questions with binary outcomes. At a bank, for instance, we could wonder if a person is worth of credit or not, and should we give that person a loan or not. If you're looking at individual transactions, we could use a binary outcome to model if that particular transaction is a legal or a fraudulent transaction. In the context of schools, a yes-no question could be if a particular student is admitted or not into the school. In the context of politics, we could assess if this person will vote against or in favor of a particular law. Finally, coming back to the retail context, a binary variable could mean that a customer bought a product or did not buy a product. So how could we represent binary outcomes? Recall these are variables that only have two potential values, usually indicating if an observation belongs to a certain category or has satisfied some particular attribute. It's going to be a yes-no question. Similar to how we did with independent variables, we can create a dummy variable that is going to be equal to 1 if the answer to our question is a yes, and a 0 otherwise. Note that if we coded our dependent variable the other way around, the coefficients are going to have the same magnitudes but the opposite signs. How come? Well, whatever helps me, for example, buy a product will have the exact opposite effect in helping me not buy that product and thus we're going to have the opposite sign for that attribute. The data we will be using in this example is a set of 1,000 random customers from a given city, and we want to know what determines their likelihood or decision to subscribe to a particular magazine. Our dependent variable, naturally, is going to be an indicator variable that tells us if the customer has subscribed to the magazine or not. It will have a 1 if the subscription took place and a 0 otherwise. We also have access to some demographic information that could influence a customer's likelihood of subscribing to the magazine, for instance, age. And in fact, in this video, we will only focus on this particular attribute of a customer. We could also have other attributes such as gender, but we will not rely on them on this video. If we think about the problem, we don't see too many reasons why we could not use a linear model. Because, aside from being binary, there's really nothing else special about this binary dependent variable. In fact, if we want to change this binary variable from a 0 to a 1, we are changing its value to a higher one, and thus anything that increases the value of y should favor the likelihood of a customer subscribing to the magazine. So we could run a simple linear regression model that looks as the one shown, where we have subscribed the binary dependent variable as dependent variable and age as our only regressor. The regression output in a statistical package, in this case Gretel, shows us the coefficient for the intercept and the slope. So our estimated model is subscribe equals minus 1.7 plus 0.064 times age. And what does this result mean? If we recall that our dependent variable is binary, it's a 0 or a 1, and we want to make it grow from 0 to 1, this is very closely tied to trying to increase the probability of a customer buying, where the probability of subscribing equals 1 is the likelihood of a customer subscribing to the magazine. Let's denote for simplicity this probability as p, and then we can rewrite the model as the probability of subscribing equal 1, or p, 
is minus 1.7 plus 0.064 times age. So since this is the slope of our model, we can simply take the coefficient of age and make the following assertion. Every additional year of age increases the probability of subscription by 6.4%. And this makes a lot of sense. Now let's check if we can use this to forecast probabilities of customers with given ages. Recall that probabilities are bounded and they have to be between 0 and 1. Moreover, also note that the range of age in our dataset goes from 20 to 55. That is, the youngest customer in the dataset has 20 years old and the oldest one has 55. Since it only makes sense to develop forecasts for observations similar to the ones we have in our data, then we can assume that computing the estimated probability of a 35-year-old person subscribing is very easy. What we must do is simply plug in the 35 and we find that the estimated probability of a 35-year-old person subscribing is 0.54. So far, so good. But what about people with 25 or 45 years of age? Given the range of age, this should work just as well. However, if we plug in 25, we find that the probability that this customer buys is estimated to be minus 0.09. And this cannot be correct since a probability cannot have a negative value. Similarly, if we plug in the 45, we end up with a number of 1.2, which is greater than 1, again an invalid value for a probability. This becomes more clear if we plot what we're having. In this plot, you observe the bounds of probabilities that should go from 0 to 1. And note that when customers are young, say below 26 years of age or so, the estimated probabilities are negative. Meanwhile, if the customer has more than 43 or 44 years of age, the probabilities are greater than 1. This model is just not working. How could we fix this? One option is to artificially cap the linear model and say, whenever the estimated probability is below a 0, make it a 0, and whenever the estimated probability is above 1, make it a 1. And this would give us a spline function as the one shown with those breaks in the function, but this is too engineered, way too custom to be a standard approach. Could we do something better? And let's think, what should we do to fix this? Once again, note that probabilities should be between 0 and 1. And we know that the probability will be a function of age, however the linear function did not work for us. So what conditions should this function satisfy to always produce reasonable forecast for the probability. I will give you a few seconds to think about this. Well, there are two main attributes that must be satisfied. One is that the probability must always be positive, and second, that it must be less than one. So let's now try to develop a new function that satisfies these two criteria. And we're going to do it step by step. First, let's ensure that we have a positive number. And what functions could give out positive numbers? You can think of the absolute value of a number is always positive. The squared version of any number is always positive as well. And an alternative to this is an exponential form, whereby the exponent of beta 0 plus beta 1 times age, which is the same as saying e powered to beta 0 plus beta 1 times age, is always going to be positive. You can check it with an Excel or in some other software. It's always going to be positive. However, it sometimes will be greater than 1. So we need something else to satisfy the second criteria, that the probability is less or equal than 1. And if you think about proportions, any given number divided by a number that is just slightly greater than it will give us a number smaller than 1. So why not do the same? Why not use the expression we had before and divided by something that is slightly larger. How much? Well, just one unit larger. We have the same expression above and below, but in the denominator, we have a plus one. Note that we could have added any small value or large value, an epsilon for that matter, and the condition of having a value less than one would still be satisfied. However, we use one for reasons that will become clear shortly. Now, even though we have this more complex expression, the linear thinking is not completely gone. If we do some algebra, the previous expression can be written as follows. 
we have the log of p over 1 minus p, p being the result of the prior expression, is equal to a linear function of age that looks just like the linear simple regression models we had before. So even though the probability of a customer subscribing is not a linear function of age, we can perform a simple transformation on it such that it is now a linear function of age. The above equation is the one used in logistic regressions. And let me show you the output of a logistic regression in Gretel. You can see that we have the coefficient for the intercept and the slope, the beta 0 and the beta 1. But how we interpret these coefficients is different. We will discuss the interpretation of the coefficients in another video. For now, let's simply note that the model we estimated, given that our dependent variable is the log of p over 1 minus p, is minus 26.52 plus 0 0.78 times h. Or if we do the algebra again and write this in terms of the probability, we have that p is equal to that expression. And note that all what I'm doing is rewriting the expression, but substituting the beta zeros and beta ones for the corresponding coefficients that came out of the regression output. If we now plot the probability against age using this expression, this is what we find. And note that the probability is no longer below 0 or above 1. In fact, as customers grow older, the probability asymptotically gets closer to 1. And as customers grow younger, the function is asymptotically closer to 0, but never below 0 or above 1. This is the plot of a logistic model. Thank you very much.